of course, we're watching 2% levels for the U.S. 10-year. I'm just wondering, once we hit those yields and the, those levels, uh, does it spark another leg in, in the sell-off, or do you think that you know we, we are seeing some value now uh, across the curve? Yeah, hi, good morning. So I think, in, indeed, this 2% uh, is an important psychological level that at least we haven't seen in some time. Um, but I think the impact would actually be more keenly felt in some of these emerging market uh, uh, currencies. Because, for example, if I, if I were to uh, highlight that the Chinese yuan is one currency that has been very well supported because it has a yield of about 2.7% on the 10-year bond. Um, and if investors start to see a 2% handle on the U.S. Treasuries, for example, I think the, the, the willingness for investors to, to, to continue to hold or add into some of these emerging market currencies could actually start to diminish in a non-linear fashion. So I would imagine crossing the 2% threshold for the U.S. Treasuries would actually result in a slightly bigger impact on EM currency success as opposed to the uh, developed market currencies. So essentially, I'm just wondering in terms of this, we saw into the bond auctions for the U.S. 10-year yesterday. I mean, it was quite a bit of a robust investor demand wherever you see along the curve, the three-year and the 10-year. And it's quite dangerous, right, doing this just, you know, a day before the U.S. inflation print comes out where we're likely to see a 7 percent or more handle for U.S. inflation. I'm just wondering what gives here? What, what's going on in the bond market, you think? But I think um, if an investor were to, for example, hold back uh, from participating in the auction just because of this imminent CPI print, um, I, I don't think that is how the investor actually think about this or approach this. Because um, as you know, um, asset managers, they do have capital to allocate and they do have roll-offs as well. So I think if, if, uh, if, for example, a Japanese pension fund sees a 1.9 handle on a 10-year treasury, um, it would actually be almost uh, as good as any time, uh, notwithstanding the fact that there is a data point on the, on the next list. Right. Yeah, I think, yeah, that, that's the next part of the conversation, isn't it, Tech? Uh, you know, whether or not we do get that flood of money going back into Japan at these levels and whether the BOJ actually comes in. I, I wanted to ask you about your calls on, on the Chinese currency because it's, it's a bit bifurcated as far as you're concerned. Just explain that to us. Uh, you, you, you think the yuan is going to weaken against the dollar but stay strong against others? Yeah, so it is a perspective where um, ju just against a backdrop of broader dollar strength that is still ahead of us, um, for example, if the U.S. real rates go from today we are standing at 0.5 uh, negative closer to zero, I think historically speaking the sensitivity of currencies uh, not just in Asia but broadly speaking has been one uh, that is dollar supportive. So I think in that spirit we are looking for the Chinese yuan to weaken against the dollar. But um, as you know, um, the, the, the Chinese yuan has uh, a, a, a more controlled approach towards uh, dollar Chinese yuan movement as compared to other currencies. So, for example, if you get another round of dollar strength bringing the euro back down towards the 111 uh, level, um, I would say that the Chinese yuan maybe move a little bit towards the 645, and net-net, you still get the Chinese yuan uh, actually holding better versus currencies like the euro um, or, or, or the uh, Swiss franc or the Japanese yen. So it is a relative perspective.